Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart Marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on Walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Today's podcast is sponsored by Sparklist, the total self-service email marketing solution for small to medium-sized businesses at sparklist.com. Welcome to the e-commerce conversation with Pat Callahan, a weekly podcast focusing on e-commerce topics, featuring interviews with prominent people in the e-commerce space. And now let's move right on over to Pat to see who he has queued up for this week's interview. Welcome to e-commerce conversations. I'm Pat Callahan. Today I'm joined by Tyler Hannon, a platform evangelist with IP Commerce, which is a company that maintains partnerships with some of the world's most respected financial institutions and software companies, including Microsoft, PayPal, Chase Payments, and more. Tyler, it's good to have you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate you taking your time to talk to me today. Tyler, can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do at IP Commerce? Absolutely. IP Commerce is a, is a software company that's really building a platform and toolkit for the payments industry. We really focus on, on three areas in payments. We focus on the service provider, folks like, like you mentioned in your introduction, like Chase Payment Tech and PayPal, and enabling their services to be integrated to the platform, to be offered to the market very simply. We also work a lot with software companies who are building integrated software solutions, whether that's a desktop point of sale application or an e-commerce shopping cart. And then together with those two sort of participants, we also work with distribution channels to get those solutions offered out to the market in a way that really represents scale for everyone who's involved in the ecosystem. Great. Which brings me to the reason we're having this e-commerce conversation. One thing I've been hearing about a lot lately is here not only hearing about but thinking about is PCI compliance. Absolutely. And, and I think it's on it's on the minds of, of everybody in the e commerce space right now. Uh, and perhaps I shouldn't say everybody, but but certainly a lot of people. And I, I wanna ask you first, for those who are not familiar with PCI compliance, would you explain what it is? Absolutely. So PCI compliance it, it actually stands for PCI is payments card industry. And then you'll hear PCI DSS, which stands for Data Security Standards. And really what the standards are designed to do is to help ensure a secure environment for handling the data around a credit card or, or bank card transaction. It's actually a joint venture between Visa, American Express, MasterCard, Discover Card, and JCB, which is a Japanese card issue. Okay. I think some of the gray areas exist because some people aren't sure if it is mandatory or, or voluntary. So is it... Is it mandatory or voluntary? Okay, so actually that, that's a great question. You know, for a while, PCI was actually sort of a voluntary program. But recently it's becoming mandatory. In fact, it's become mandatory. It is now mandatory for any merchant that processes a Visa credit card. And ultimately the acquiring bank is responsible for ensuring that all of their merchants are compliant. However, the merchants and the acquiring bank are both liable for the protection of the data and ultimately, they're also both able to be assessed fines if that data is breached. Okay. Let me ask you this. Can you tell me how online shoppers, consumers, how they can tell if a site is adhering to PCI compliance, or can you tell? Well, you can tell, and that, that's actually a great question. You know, one of the things I would always encourage is it's important to know who you're doing business with. So if, if this is an, an e-commerce merchant that, you know, you, you have very little experience with, it, it's worth checking into what their sort of security program is, and there's very simple ways that you can tell many of the security assessors, and just as an aside, a QSA or qualified security assessor, those are the people who work with the largest of the large sort of e-commerce merchants. And all of those security assessors have a logo program. You know, for example, Trustwave has a trusted commerce seal, and it'll show when the site was most recently verified as securely processing transactions. In addition, there's also things like ASVs or approved scanning vendors, and that's where you'll see a logo on the site like HackerSafe or something similar to that, Scan Alert. 
it's always good to check for that. In addition, there's, you know, there's some very simple things you can do. Ensure that it's using encryption when you're sending it. So make sure the lock is in the bottom corner and that the lock corresponds to the site that you're dealing with and the URL string says HTTPS. Beyond just this sort of basic information, I'd always encourage to look at who is it that they've partnered with. And most of the reputable e-commerce merchants will have information about who's providing security services for them. Who is it that they've partnered with to ensure that your data is secure when you're performing an online transaction. I think that's great advice. Certainly some things I haven't thought about. Let me let me ask you this. Currently, how secure is credit card data? Are there risks online consumers may not be aware of? You know, <laughs> that's a great question. The, the danger of security, or perhaps the challenge of security, is that as good as we can make security, someone is always going to try to find a way to break it. But generally speaking, e-commerce sites are, are much more advanced from a security perspective than the offline world. Um, for example, all of the stories that have been in the news around the TJ Maxx data breach, et cetera, all that was happening actually in the store location. Now, with that said, as I mentioned earlier, it's always important for a consumer to verify that the company that they're doing business with, whether that's online or offline, is practicing the most up-to-date security procedures. And ultimately, you know, I really view PCI compliance as a way to gauge whether or not that merchant is really taking their consumer security to heart. Okay. If uh, e-commerce, if an online e-business is not currently PCI compliant, what do you recommend? The first thing that I would recommend is to educate yourself on what PCI compliance is. Um, PCI compliance, the, the restrictions around what you're allowed to do really fall into several categories. And, and it's important to consider that PCI is about more than just the cardholder data. It's about how secure your network is. It's about how secure your physical environment is. It's about how often you have to test your networks. It's about maintaining an, an information security policy. And really based on the level of merchant that you are, whether you're a level one, two, three, or four merchant, and that all that information can be found on the Visa website. You can determine what size of merchant you are. They have information about not only how do I you know, get started, but what do I need to do in order to become PCI compliant? And what do I need to do in order to stay PCI compliant? Several of the security assessors, Trustwave, Coalfire are two great examples, have online questionnaires where you can go and find out how close am I to not only PCI compliance, but to the software element of PCI compliance, known as PABP, or Payment Application Best Practice. You know, ultimately, for each compromised record, it can be between 90 and $305 according to Forrester Research, that the merchant is going to have to pay for each record that's caught up in, in a security breach. So it's important to not only educate yourself, but it's also important to partner with people in the industry who really focus on that. You know, you can, you can invest in many ways. You can invest in internal headcount to, to try to get more information about compliance, or you can invest in partnership. And I personally feel that investing in a partnership with someone like a coal fire or a trust wave or a number of the, the security vendors and security assessors that are listed on Visa's website is really the best way to begin to address the issues of both PCI and PABP compliance. Tyler, that's a great answer. Is there anything, Tyler, that you think that any points that I may have I may have missed as far as the, the PCI issue? No, I think that that's actually you know a great summary. Okay. You know, it's worth noting, I, I talked about the levels of merchants. Um, Basically, level two says, you know, anyone who runs up to a million visa transactions per year, and it goes down from there. Only 33% of level two merchants are PCI compliant as of this July. And the numbers sort of drop off drastically in level three and level four. 65% of level one are there. So that's a great place to think about when shopping. But as a merchant who lives in either level two, three, or four, it becomes not only important to ensure that you're protecting yourself, but it becomes a great way to show a competitive differentiation against other people that may be doing the same business you are. You can show that, listen, not only am I providing you the excellent service that you're accustomed to, but I'm doing it in a fashion that's secure. Okay. Tyler, I think that's all, all of those points are, are so important uh, when it comes to PCI compliance. I want to thank you. I appreciate the advice. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I hope to have you on again. <laughs> My pleasure, Pat. I look forward to speaking with you in the future. Great. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> That's all the time we have for this week's e-commerce conversation with Pat Callahan. I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next week for another new episode to find out who Pat will be speaking with.